Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about acoustic neuroma. Acoustic neuroma is the most common benign tumor of the cerebellum pointing angle, and it is benign tumor but is locally invasive, and it is an extremely slow growing tumor. The site of origin, and the most common site of origin of acoustic neuroma, is the shown self of the inferior vestibular nerve in the zone of transition of central myelin to peripheral myelin. This zone is termed as the overstainer reddish zone, and these zones lie in the internal acoustic meters. Next, com next most common site of origin of acoustic neuroma is from the shown self of superior vestibular nerve. Rarely, it may originate from the cochlear nerve. Therefore, this tumor is more aptly known as vestibular schwannoma. And about the clinical features, well, uh, this acoustic uh, neuroma usually occurs in the age group of 40 to 70 years people. If present in young people, like 20 or 30 years old people, then the patient should be investigated for neurofibromatosis type 2 or maybe type 1. And since this tumor arises in the internal acoustic meters, initial symptoms are because of the compression of the adjacent nerve and vessels in the internal acoustic meters. Uh, later, when the tumor grows into the cerebellopontine angle, symptoms arise because of compression of these structures. And accordingly, several stages are described during the progressive growth of tumor. The first one is the otologic stage. In this stage, the symptoms occur because of the compression of these nerves and vessels. And the cochlear nerve compression symptoms are uh, unilateral sensor neural hearing loss and tinnitus and, and rarely the patient can present with sudden um, hearing loss and if there is sudden increase in size of tumors due to uh, hemorrhage or cystic enlargement well Another one is the vestibular nerve compression symptoms. Compression and destruction of the vestibular nerve usually doesn't cause severe, uh, um, severe disturbance of equilibrium and frank vertigo. And since it's a very slow growing tumor and compensations occurs by central nervous system, well, um, the caloric response is reduced on the side of lesion. In this regard, it is important to remember that the caloric test is mainly a test for the lateral semicircular canal, which is innervated by superior vestibular nerve. Another symptoms are the facial nerve compression symptoms, and these symptoms is because of the motor fibers of facial nerve that take a very long time to get effect. Hence, facial weakness is seen quietly in acoustic neuroma. Um, but sensory fibers of facial may get affected by compression. And this involvement of sensory component fa of facial uh, leads to anesthesia over the posterior superior part of external auditory meters and canal. And this is known as Hixenberger sign. And this, but this. Hixelberger sign is present only in 25% of patients and it also being subjective. Um, the second stage uh, is the five nerve involvement. And the five nerve forms the upper boundary of cerebellar pointing angle while transversing the petrous apex, the petrous apex <laughs> to reach the Meckel's cave on the anterior slang of uh, Peter's part of temporal bone and it is therefore compressed by the upper pole of tumor and the earliest ocular sign is the um, loss of corneal reflex and this is most common and more important than the Hixelberger sign if in a patient of acoustic neuroma corneal reflex is absent, it means that the tumor either is like 
two to twenty point five centimeters in size and is outside the internal acoustic meters in the cerebellar pointing angle. With further growth there can be facial numbness. And the third stage of cerebellar compression uh, is because of the further growth of the tumor in the cerebellar pointing angle. And there is a cerebellar compression leading to ataxia and dysmetria and dysenergia and nystagmus. And there can be multiplied cranial nerve pulses. The cranial nerve, like 9, 10, and 11, form in the lower boundary of cerebellar pointing angle and are involved by the lower pole of the tumor. This is the jugular foramen syndrome. The last stage of increased intracranial pressure and terminal stage, uh, well, this is the last stage, and hydrocephalus leads to increased intracranial pressure leading to fissures like headache, uh, uh, nausea, vomiting, and papilledema. Ultimately, death can occur due to compression of vital centers in the brain stem. And in the investigation of this neuroacoustic neuroma, well, there is the Rene test that is positive, the Weber test that is towards normal size, and PTA shows insoneural hearing loss and tone decay is more than 30 uh, dB. Acoustic reflex decay is positive, and a speech discrimination score is very um, poor. And this, um, this poor discrimination scores uh, becomes poorer when, when retesting a higher speech intensity, uh, the rollover uh, phenomenon. And the best audi audiometric test for acoustic neuroma is uh, Vera, and it is the most sensitive audiometric test for the diagnosis of acoustic neuroma. The most uh, diagnostic findings suggestive of acoustic neuroma on Vera is increased interaural latency of wave uh, 5 of more than uh, 0 0.2 ms, and next important diagnosis finding is increased uh, latency between waves uh, like the 1 to 5. And caloric test is reduced on, on the side of lesions. And BEMP or vestibular evoke, uh, vestibular evoke myogenic potential, which tests the inferior vestibular nerve, is reduced on the side of lesion. And the gold standard investigation for the diagnosis of acoustic neuroma is the Gadolinium and Hayes MRI. Well, the management of acoustic neuroma is by following modalities. The first one is the surgical excision, the second one is the radiation or gamma knife, and the third one is the observation. The third one, the surgical excision, is the treatment of choice for acoustic neuroma, and this is done by the following approaches, depending upon extent of tumor and residual hearing uh, in the patient. And the translaborantine is the most common approach, and the tumor in the internal acoustic medius is approached through the labyrinthine via the posterior route. And here, a mastoidectomy is performed, followed by total labyrinthectomy. And another one is the suboccipital and retrosagmoid, and here, the cerebellar pointing angle is approached through the posterior cranial fossa for tumor resection. Another one is the combined translabyrinthine and suboccipital approach. And another one is the middle cranial uh, fossa approach. And here, the internal acoustic medius is approached through the middle cranial fossa by making a craniotomy at the temple without doing labyrinthectomy. So when the hearing of patient is preserved, a middle cranial fossa approach is preferred. The second one is the radiation or gamma knife. This is by stereotactic radiotherapy by gamma knife and it aims maximum amount of radiation of the tumor site. It retards the growth of tumor but doesn't destroy it. 
Uh, hence, it can be used for small tumors in elderly or medically infirm patients where clinically important tumor growth has been documented. And the last one is the observation. It being a benign and extremely slow-growing tumor, if the patient is more than 65 years old, and the tumor is very small in size, a way and watch policy with close observation by early MRI should be followed. It can be used for small tumors in elderly or medically infirm patients. And so that is all for this podcast. Thank you.